thing about being autistic is that not only am I the protagonist in my life, I'm also the script writer and the script has to be written and rehearsed before it's delivered. If I'm in a group setting and I leave to go to the bathroom, best believe the first thing I say when I come back into that room is something that I will have been rehearsing in my head involuntarily while in the bathroom multiple times so that I come, can come back and deliver it with the exact rehearsed intonation so as to appear most normal to a neurotypical group. Or even if they're neurodiverse, that's just how my brain works. Like, can we go off book sometimes? I beg. Stay in the box. No! Stay in the box. No! Get out of my skin! Genders are performance, and I don't have my lines. I don't have my script. I don't know what's going on. I made my own costume. It looks weird. No one's sure what's happening, least of all me. I can't be what you need. I am The simplest thing you can do if you're struggling is to change your name to something ugly, like Helga or Gertrude. That way, it doesn't matter what you look like, people will assume you're cis because why the hell would you change your name to something so stupid? I want to talk about special interests because as much as I love my special interests and it can be a wonderful, beautiful thing, it can be disabling at the same time. I've seen almost 10 videos lately of people talking about why is having intense passion about something criteria for a disability? Like, there's a reason. <laughs> In my experience, a special interest is a lot more than just having, you know, a lot of passion about a subject. It, it's a lot more extreme. To give you some ideas of how it can be disabling, I've ended up in the hospital because of my special interest because I was so intensely stuck and focused on it, I refused and people couldn't get me to eat or drink food and it was getting to the point that it was dangerous. It also messes up my sleep. A lot. It made school incredibly challenging because my brain was so stuck on my special interests. It was very hard and challenging to get me to learn or do anything else. It also has greatly hindered my social interactions and relationships, especially when I was younger. I really struggled having any back and forth conversations and could only talk about my special interest. It has also put me in some dangerous life-threatening situations because I was so stuck and focused on it that I was completely unaware of my surroundings. If I am not able to engage in my special interest, I get very dangerously depressed. I experience a lot more autistic meltdowns and I look like I'm having a seizure, autistic shutdowns, verbal shutdowns. Like The autistic joy that can come from engaging in my special interest can be wonderful, but something can be beautiful and wonderful and still be disabling at the same time. Oh, hi, Louise. Oh, oh hi, just... Mom. Hello. You're holding my stuff. Hello, my little lady. Hello, Mom. What are I you was... doing with my stuff? I... In this song, I'm going to teach you the 12 months of the year. Are you ready? Here we go. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. These are the 12 months of the year. ill. We're gonna overdo it and flare up our symptoms. We're chronically ill. Just because we did something yesterday, that doesn't mean we can do it again today. We're chronically ill. We're gonna feel like a burden. We're chronically ill. We're gonna dress comfortably. We're chronically ill. We're gonna use mobility aids if we need to. We're chronically ill. We're gonna be gaslighted by our doctors. We're chronically ill. We're gonna be gaslighted at the ER. We're chronically ill. We're not just gonna feel better. We're chronically ill. Trust me, we've tried it all. 
We're chronically ill. We can't be cured by yoga. We're chronically ill. We're gonna eat what we want, when we want, how we need to. We're chronically ill. We've learned to mask our pain and discomfort. We're chronically ill. We're not just anxious. We're chronically ill. People are gonna feel uncomfortable around us. Nothing makes me scared. Do you see my hands? Do they look like they shaking to you? No. mathematics or statistics or calculations or anything at all like that because I can't do it so I just hope for the best <laughs> Y'all ever look at pictures of yourself pre-transition and realize how hot you were in a way that you could never realize before? I used to have this phase where I was wearing crop tops and makeup every day and looking back at pictures I'm thinking damn like that is like she is an objectively good looking girl like she was hot but I could never realize that during that time I literally felt like the ugliest girl in the world I felt like there were a million things wrong with me and I was physically unattractive but now that the gender dysphoria is clear I'm looking back at these pictures and I'm able to just like appreciate that I was a, a good looking girl and it's funny because like gender dysphoria just clouds everything like in no way was I ever able to see that I was objectively not an ugly person because all I could think about was the gender dysphoria and now that's cleared up it's like wait I can I can appreciate her I can appreciate what I used to look like but I was still really insecure about myself and it's funny because now looking back at pictures all I see is like a foreign human being because I've changed so much now but it's cool to be able to just like objectively look back at myself and see what I looked like as if I was another person like I'm in a totally like third eye observer point now just thinking back on my past it's iconic and I love to do iconic shit that's not true I can express feelings nothing on the outside nothing on the inside how the fuck did nobody know I was autistic instead of playing with kids at recess I drew in the sand with sticks and I guess a teacher kept seeing me because she called me into her classroom and was like are you alone on purpose do you not have friends on purpose are you yes I said yes, I am doing it on purpose. I cut up little pieces of bed sheet 
to bring with me so I can fidget, but only one bed sheet specifically because it has the right texture. When I was like 12 years old, I would vacuum my room in a way so that all the carpet fibers were facing the same direction. And if anybody walked in my room after that and messed up the direction of the carpet fibers, I would yell at them. In elementary school, I would direct original plays, which were just rewrites of things I had already seen. And then I would try to teach the other kids blocking and singing and choreography. And they never got performed because everyone would just get annoyed with me. And as I got older, my parents had to beg me to join clubs and leave the house and be a normal teenager. They were giving me money to go get like soda or fast food. So we're like, please, please go do something. Right now I'm not depressed. I'm just having a little break from slaying. I'm just having a little break from slaying and then I'm gonna go back to slaying soon. So don't you worry.